Hi, I'm Connor and welcome to ADO. Today, we're going to be applying the Python shaft package to a CatBoost classifier. The goal is to show you the benefits of using CatBoost when your dataset has many categorical features. Now, I actually have a video that gives a much more extensive look at applying the Python package. So I'll check that out if you're not so familiar with the code. And in that video, we apply SHAP to an XGBoost model. And we saw that when it comes to categorical features, you first have to use one hot encodings to transform those variables and then apply the model. But when you go to analyze that model using SHAP, you see that you have one SHAP value for each dummy variable in that categorical feature. And that leads to a little bit of a problem because it's, it's difficult to understand the overall effect of that categorical feature. So one way to handle it is just to add up the shaft values at the end. That can work quite well, but it's a little bit tedious. Another way of handling those features is to use cap boost. Okay, so before we start, I'd also just like to mention that I have a course out on shaft covers all of the theory as well as the Python code behind the method in a lot of depth. If you're interested in that, definitely check it out and wait until the end of the video where I'll explain how you can get it for free. Now, we're not gonna get into the details behind how cat boost works, but what's important to know is that you can apply it to categorical features without transforming them using one hot encodings. And as a result, you end up with one shaft value for each categorical feature. So to see this, let's jump straight to the notebook. And so we're working with the CatBoost classifier notebook in the additional resources folder. And we have the same imports as before, except now we are using the CatBoost classifier as the modeling package. And we're also gonna apply the XGBoost so you can really see the difference between how um, the shaft values look for both of these models. And we have the mushroom data set. And the idea behind this data set is we want to predict the class of the mushroom. And that's whether the mushroom is edible or poisonous, which is very important. And then for the target variables for the, the model features, you can see we have loads of different categorical features. Over tw uh, We have 22 categorical features. And you can imagine if we apply one hot encodings to each of these features, we're going to end up with many, many dummy variables in our model. So yeah, let's actually see this. First, we, we get the dummy variables. We then use these to train an XGBoost classifier. So we're just passing the dummy variables and we're predicting our binary target variable. Then lastly, we get our shaft values and display the first, or we display the waterfall plot for the first prediction. So straight away, you can see we have loads of different dummy features. Let's focus on one of them in particular. Let's focus on this odor categorical feature. You can see that odor equals, odor P equals one. This tells us that the category for this odor feature is P, which is pungent. So this, this mushroom has a pungent smell, but it's not really easy to see what overall effect this odor feature has, because you can see there's another odor dummy variable here and one year, and there might be more within this 108 features. So we can't really see what the effect of odor is on this model prediction. Um, and as we mentioned, one way to see this is to just add up all these categorical features for, for odor. But yeah, again, we're dealing with many, many features here. So an easier way is to just use cat boost. So we are training our cat boost model. Um, we just use a few standard hyperparameters 
and we are passing in our model features and target variable. And then we just need to let cat boost know which of the model features are categorical features. And in this case, all of them are. So we just pass a list of um, that's as long as our feature set. And yeah, then we can apply SHAP to this model. And again, the code is exactly the same as before, as what we saw for XGBoost. And then we can finally get our waterfall plot for this for the first prediction. And straight away, you can see um, it's much easier to tell the effect of the, of the individual categorical features. And we can see that in this case, um, odor has the value P, which tells us it has a pungent odor. And we can see that uh, the odor categorical feature has increased the log odds of getting a poison prediction by 0 0.89. So yeah, much easier to explain the effect of the categorical feature. And then we can also apply the, the other SHAP plots just as before. And in this case, we can see ODA actually has, uh, generally has a, a large effect on the SHAP values. And then again, we can apply uh, B swarm plots. But in this case, we don't get this nice sort of color effect because we have categorical features. And yeah, a better way to maybe analyze the categorical features would be to use a box plot. And I'll leave it up to a challenge in this lesson to apply that box plot to maybe get a better understanding of how these features are impacting predictions. When should you use cat boost over another modeling package? Well, firstly, if your goal is to get the best performing model possible, with the highest accuracy, you don't really want to restrict yourself to using just cat boost, even if you have lots of categorical features. This is because other modeling packages like XGBoost may give you better performance. So if this is your goal, then I wouldn't just use cat boost, even if you have lots of categorical features, I would use whatever modeling package gives you the best performance and then use the other method that we discussed to analyze the shaft values. And that is just adding up the shaft values at the end. But if your goal is to just analyze a data set or explore a data set that has many categorical features and you want to use machine learning to help, then cat boost is, is definitely in the way to go. Because it doesn't really matter what the performance is of the model. It just matters that you use a model that can extract the underlying relationships in your data sets. And then yeah, you use SHAP to help uncover some of those relationships. And yeah, I mentioned my SHAP course in the beginning of this lesson. And yeah, the first 20 people that use this coupon will get that course for free. And then after that, I'll set it at a discount for a while, but it's definitely a time limited discount. So get it while, get it while it lasts.